lot of generation of wastewater from cities. As urbanization uh, increases and more and more people, 50% of the population is going to live in cities and so there's a lot of wastewater being generated. And we have to dispose of this wastewater. Try to get a maximum value out of that wastewater would be a positive benefit. And it would also therefore be an encouragement to look at wastewater disposal as a business. And this is the only way to head towards comprehensive uh, treatment and disposal of wastewater. Um, the other growing concern is that we are moving in some countries into water stress conditions. And in a sense, every drop of water counts. Under these water stress conditions, what's going to happen is that uh, cities are definitely going to be given the priority in terms of water. And uh, the, to the detriment of farmers, because agriculture is the major source, uh, major user of water. And so returning some of this water into the agricultural sector with some added benefit would actually help in this process of integration. Um, one of the methods that is commonly suggested in developing countries is the, the ponding system. Uh, wastewater uh, treatment lagoons, okay, stabilization ponds. Um, and this is an approach that is being used uh, quite extensively in countries, except that there's a problem with the amount of space that is required for this purpose. And so, to some extent, in smaller communities and with decentralized systems, this is possible. But if you take large cities with a lot of wastewater being produced, uh, removal of this wastewater and treatment then with low technology becomes an issue. Now, however, in developing countries, there is a tendency in these cities to move towards decentralization, or at least this is encouraged, decentralized wastewater management. And for these decentralized systems, there are methods which are uh, less, uh, which require less technology and uh, less operation and maintenance, which is one of the issues in developing countries, to keep these uh, systems functioning. And some, one of these systems are these uh, biogas uh, reactors, for instance, uh, biodigesters. Um, systems which use a concentration of uh, bacterial flora to treat the wastewater, but in a very uh, um, small area. And so we uh, get over this problem of stabilization ponds and large areas and we move towards these types of technologies. In terms of um, new thinking and new areas of research uh, into, uh, uh, that one needs to reflect about in relation to, to water reuse, my own organization, the International Water Management Institute, uh, has been working on the one hand on ways in which, low cost ways in which risk uh, can be minimized when wastewater, particularly untreated or partially treated wastewater is used by farmers. And uh, secondly, a new direction that we are exploring is to see how good practice examples of wastewater reuse, that is taking all these aspects into consideration, safety definitely, in what um, uh, how much, uh, how, uh, how economically viable it is, why is it a successful practice, 
in a specific situation and we want to try to understand what makes it work, what are the factors of success in order to be able to upscale it. And one of the areas of, of, of importance here is to try to understand these, these good practices in terms of the business model that they represent. Both the economic and financial model, but the business model understood in the larger context of what are the what is the enabling environment for such a practice to be successful? How can we then attract the private sector into participating in these ventures? And so this is a whole new exciting area that we are uh, working on and we see as a, a new challenge to address in this whole field of uh, re recycling and reuse of waste water, particularly if this becomes part of the sustainable development goals.